Hello and welcome to Hollywood at Home from Arizona Public Media. I'm Victoria Lucas. A year before Orson Welles terrified America with his 1938 radio broadcast, War of the Worlds, this 22-year-old had already been hailed as a genius for his triumphant Broadway stage adaptation of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Well, tonight's movie, Me and Orson Welles, is set within that production in the exciting theater world of New York in the 1930s. A young and naive aspiring actor, played by Zac Efron, gets the opportunity of a lifetime when director Orson Welles picks him to play the minor role of Brutus's servant in Caesar, where he promptly begins to experience the tumultuous life of the theater. First, he falls for an ambitious production assistant, played by Claire Danes, who happens to be in a relationship with the director. Possibly not the best choice, and matters progress from there in ever more interesting ways. Now, this is not just some Hollywood screenwriter's fantasy. In fact, the movie is based on author Robert Kaplow's carefully researched historical novel by the same title. Kaplow had happened upon an old publicity photo of Wells sitting next to a young man during a rehearsal of Caesar. He later told NPR, my first thought was, the real story here is the kid. What does it feel like to bear witness to a celebrity creating himself right in front of your eyes? Kaplow was able to track down the now much older actor, Arthur Anderson, still living in New York, to interview him about his experiences. From those interviews came the somewhat fictionalized book, and from that book came veteran producer-director Richard Linklater's compulsion to turn the story into a film. He optioned the book with his own money, uh, commissioned a screenplay, and even before he had financing lined up, began searching for the perfect actor to play Orson Welles. As you might expect, there was a good deal of pressure from potential financiers to cast a big name in the role, but Linklater's answer was always the same. This is Wells. That's the biggest piece of the puzzle. People have to see him, not some movie star they've seen a hundred times before. So when Linkletter heard that a relatively unknown British actor named Christian Mackay was playing Wells to great reviews in an off-Broadway show called Rosebud, he quickly flew to New York. Even before the lights came back up, Linkletter knew he had found his Orson, saying it wasn't just the physical resemblance, it was his spirit. Christian transformed himself into Wells. And this was critical because in later discussions between the two about how the film role should be played, Linklater and Mackay agreed they wanted to avoid imitation or impersonation, but instead give the flavor of the man's personality and his voice, even his body language. For his part, Mackay was astounded at being cast, <laughs> saying, I did not think in my wildest dreams he could possibly cast an unknown, rather pompous English stage actor who'd never made a film before, but I am glad he did. With the critical role of Wells now set, director Linklater could begin casting his co-stars. For the pivotal role of the aspiring actor who happens to be at the right place in the right time, he chose fast-rising young star Zac Efron.
perhaps with an eye towards enticing potential financiers. Efron had been a child actor, then had transitioned into teen heartthrob roles, and he was thrilled at the chance to play a character different from anything he'd done before. Linklater then chose Claire Danes, already well known from the TV series My So-Called Life and nearly a dozen feature roles, to play the production assistant who sets hearts aflutter. Danes was no stranger to Wells, having fallen in love with his movies in film studies classes while a student at Yale. And she plunged into the research needed to play the role of a brash young woman in 1937, reading biographies, studying photos, listening to the music of the time, and even learning theatrical slang from the era. The next major question was where to shoot the movie. The actual New York theater was long gone, and so was most of the rest of New York. As co-producer Mark Samuelson said, New York has changed so completely since the 30s that everything in the background is wrong. The people all look wrong, and every building's been changed if they haven't disappeared entirely. So you end up shooting in some other city that looks vaguely like it did in 1937. Well, that's exactly what they did. The entire production was moved to London, England, of all places, where a combination of Pinewood Studios and some imaginatively chosen locations brought old New York back to life. Linklater explained, it's a bit of magic. We built a street at Pinewood with a green screen at one end, so a separately filmed background could be added digitally to the final image. Every exterior was shot on this one street, constantly changing set dressing and camera angles to make it look different for each sequence. The only things we shot in New York were a few still photos and some footage for the digital effects. He said he always got a kick later when New Yorkers would ask him where he had found certain locations in the city. When studio exteriors were finished, the company moved to a beautifully restored old theater on the nearby Isle of Man to shoot interiors of the long gone New York theater where the real story had taken place. And if you are a fan of live theater, one of the joys of me and Orson Welles is how it captures the life of the theater behind the curtain. The long days of rehearsal, the camaraderie, gossip, passions and superstitions, even the hazards of stage trapdoors, all leading up to that critically important opening night. As Linklater said later, Welles, as director and star, creates chaos, brings himself to the brink of failure, then pulls everything back together at the last moment. The exceptional supporting cast includes Ben Chaplin and James Tupper, who get the fun of not only portraying the real-life Mercury theater actors George Goulouris and Joseph Carton, but they also play the roles they play on stage in Caesar. And if your only memories of Wells are his commercials, we will sell no wine before it's time, don't worry. This is Wells at the start of his career, when even at such a young age, he's filled with the self-confidence and charisma that he displayed throughout his life. So now please sit back, watch the boy wonder at work, and enjoy this beautifully observed look at the theater and those brave souls who live for the arts. From 2009, it's Me and Orson Welles. <laughs>